Hi everyone, my name is Shankar Narayanan Krishnan and I am the fund manager for the Motilal Oswal Hedged Equity Multifactor AIF. It is a new open-ended AIF which is launched by the Motilal Oswal Asset Management Company, which is a leader in the space of PMS and AIF investments. And it's also known in the market to bring about novel and innovative solutions for investors. In keeping up with that tradition, the new fund tries to invest in port a stock portfolio of stocks by combining principles of factor investing along with tail hedging in a quantitative manner. The central objective of the investment strategy is to generate long-term capital appreciation. But that's an end goal. We are equally interested in seeing what is the path that we take to get to that end goal. Our objective is to try and reduce the volatility of the performance and try to have a very consistent return profile. Now, how can we do this? We are trying to take exposure to different factors because these factors have historically demonstrated varying performances during different market conditions. Just to illustrate this a bit, there are four major market conditions, which are bear market, recovery market, bull market, and market crashes. In a bear market scenario, when the broader market is typically underperforming fixed income instruments and even FD at times, the quality factor has demonstrated historically that it has generated sizable outperformance vis-a-vis -vis the market, right? And which is of course natural because quality investments typically tend to do well because investors flock towards these investments in times of market uncertainty, in times of market uh, negative market sentiment. But if you have a portfolio which is comprised only of quality stocks, then when market recovers from, let's say, a bottom and rebounds from there, which is typically called a recovery market, then your portfolio will lag significantly as well. Now, what is the solution? The solution is to incorporate something called as a value factor, which has historically again demonstrated that it does the best when market is in a recovery mode. But if your portfolio is only comprised of a quality portfolio and a value portfolio, there is an uncertainty whether, with respect to whether you will do well in a market bull, bull cycle because the bull cycle at various points in time is characterized by different market leaders. So you need something which can capture whatever is trending and the factor which does that very well is the momentum factor which essentially does just one job that is to capture whatever is trending. Right? So when we cover bull market, bear market, and recovery market, we are essentially talking about more than 99% of all the market conditions. But that still leaves us with less than 1% chance of a market crashing through. What does the market crash imply? Market crash is, you know, more than a three sigma event. Events that can, that come to mind are COVID crash, the Lehman crisis, or a dot com crash, or events like that. But don't often, often occur, but whenever they do occur, they lead to significant devastation in an investor's equity portfolio. Now, the problem is no level of stock level diversification really helps in this kind of a scenario. One could think that a solution is to do asset class diversification, but if you had just seen the performance of different asset classes during Lehman, you would have observed that irrespective of the asset class, almost everything fell anywhere between 25% to 60%. That is no one's idea of a good diversifying exposure, right? So what is the answer? Is there no answer? Actually, there is one thing which predictably moves up whenever there is a market crash, and that is investor's fear, right? We are all fearful in times of market crash. And this fear is actually captured through a quantitative indicator, which is called the implied volatility. And we are familiar with an instrument which measures this implied volatility, which is called the VIX index. Unfortunately, there is no way to directly invest in this VIX index. But we still have a solution. The solution is to invest in a portfolio of options. Because every option has a component of implied volatility which is embedded in its price, which means with increasing implied volatility, the price of the option also goes up. And this can act as a diversifying exposure to your overall equity portfolio, right? So the solution is to have an exposure to options in a manner that you are net long or you are net buyers of the option. 
so we are just putting all these things that i just spoke about together which is essentially the quality factor the value factor the momentum factor and the long volatility exposure together into one wrapper and that is what our fund is all about our fund just invests in all these all these four factors together so while all this is good how do we really position ourselves against all the other aifs and pmss that an investor has access to what are some of the key differentiating features for our fund so i can talk about four distinct features the first feature is that our portfolio is very different from the nifty 50 exposure which is what most investors tend to be over allocated to the second is we have much more balanced sectoral exposure and don't have a whole lot of exposure to banking and financial services stock so this balances out your overall portfolio allocation because mostly people tend to be over invested in the banking and financial services sector thirdly we are running a market beta a beta and a correlation with respect to the market of between 0.6 and 0.7 this adds strong diversifying characteristics and properties to the fund and finally we have this whole thing running quantitatively through a system which makes sure that there is no form of investor bias or no form of fund manager bias which comes into play in the investment decision making process so that's how we are different now let's finally talk about what kind of returns one should expect so if this strategy were had run in the past uh, what we call as back testing we actually saw decent outperformance for the strategy with respect to the benchmark but more importantly this performance came at lower levels of drawdowns as well as lower levels of volatility as compared to that of the benchmark essentially not taking as much risk as the market but still generating sizable outperformance if you try to look at it from a ro rolling holding period perspective if you have a holding period of 3 years or longer there is a strong chance that you will generate outperformance with respect to the benchmark at least that is what the historical data showed us not just in back testing but also in walk forward testing the results have been fairly encouraging having said that i would like to caution here that this is historical data markets were not as efficient 10 years ago as they are now and 10 years hence markets are expected to be even more efficient as a result the amount of outperformance that we saw historically may not manifest in future so what is a good way to look at returns we our endeavor is to really generate an outperformance of between 4 and 6% on top of that of the benchmark returns that's essentially the kind of return profile we are looking at but importantly we want to do that at lower volatility and lower drawdowns than that of the benchmark so in summary the kind of product that we are offering is fairly different from the traditional investment that an investor typically has in their portfolio whether through a mutual fund or through an alternative investment vehicle like an ai for a pms importantly it adds strong diversifying characteristics to your overall portfolio and does not compromise on returns so it can merit a good allocation from an overall investment standpoint to generate more consistent returns and get a flavor of more all weather equity investing thank you